Did you enjoy playing the many Disney games on the Sega Genesis Mega Drive console as the 90s became the peak period for collaborations between both companies to present some memorable experiences inspired by the many classic movies and animated TV shows of the era? We are going to look at every Disney video game ever released on the Sega Genesis console from the worst to the best examples that present many interesting experiences for fans. So let's dive in. Released in 1992 on the Genesis, Ariel the Little Mermaid sees you navigate vast levels collecting items and looking for treasures while avoiding enemies and hazards to progress throughout each stage. The game got ports to both the Game Gear and Master System sometime later, which I have covered in previous videos, there will be links in the description. The game has some references to the movie but acts more as its own standalone plot, but reviews weren't kind to the game, stating that it was short and lacked variety in its gameplay, and that it suffers from slowdown if too many sprites appear on the screen at the same time. It is often considered as one of the worst Disney games on the system due to these reasons. Released in 1992, Tailspin took inspiration from the cartoon series of the time, allowing players to take on the role of the main characters, requiring you to explore many locations to find, retrieve and deliver cargo packages, where you will also face many enemies and hurdles along the way, with the aim of stopping you to put you and your friends out of business. Each character has their own distinct abilities and weapons they can use to defeat opponents that will require you to find every piece of cargo in each level before you can proceed to the next. The game was released on a number of consoles with the Genesis and Game Gear iterations being different from the others in terms of gameplay. Tailspin however was met with mixed feedback upon its release, stating to be not as good as some of the more popular Disney games seen on the console, due to the lacklustre gameplay and the frustrating control elements, often inhibited progression which would only frustrate players, so it won't be for everybody. <laughs> Bonkers is a 1994 action game released on the Sega Genesis that ties into the Bonkers cartoon that was popular around the same time. The game initially was released under the Sega Club brand. The gameplay allows you to gain access to four different style mini games, each of them divided into 15 rounds which become increasingly difficult over time. Every three rounds you are given the chance to enter a bonus level played from a side scrolling platforming perspective for the opportunity to gain an extra life but if you fall off the screen you won't gain anything but you will have to continue on the rest of the game. The game's storyline involves Bonkers taking part in an officer of the month competition and is tasked with apprehending four criminals from the television series who each appear in their own mini game. Bonkers would be met with much criticism for its gameplay and is often described as very simplistic and repetitive with the replay value compared to other titles within the Disney franchise as it is pretty much the same thing over and over again. <laughs> Wow. 
Fantasia was released by Sega for the Genesis Mega Drive console in 1991 and would be developed by Infogrames, taking its inspiration from the iconic movie of the 1940s. You take control of Mickey Mouse as a sorcerer as you navigate various side-scrolling levels where you need to collect musical notes to play a song to progress to the next stage. Due to the overwhelming popularity of Castle of Illusion, Sega wanted to capitalise on its success and ended up forcing development and production to be completed in a strict time frame, hoping to make sales before the launch of Sonic the Hedgehog that same year, resulting in the game being rushed, and with its poor reception and sales, Disney ordered removal of the game from store shelves, so as to not further tarnish the iconic nature of the film any further. Sega missed an opportunity with this game, as they were more interested in quickly releasing the game rather than allowing time to create a more playable and polished experience. Reviews would greatly reflect on these elements, which stated that the game had great visuals, but didn't meet the same standard seen with some of Disney's previous titles. Beauty and the Beast, Bell's Quest, was published in 1993 on the Sega Genesis to reflect the popularity of the movie released in 1991. The game follows the plot of the movie itself with Bell's father, Maurice, an eccentric inventor who is being held captive in an old castle for trespassing that is owned by a prince that has been transformed due to a curse laid upon him and his servants for his arrogance. You will journey through many locations similar to the film from a town, village, a dark forest, eventually to the castle itself, where you will have to avoid enemies and obstacles while solving many puzzles along the way. Unlike other Disney titles, the gameplay is very simplistic in its approach and isn't overly difficult, as there is no combat where you will spend most of your time running, hiding, jumping over platforms and solving simple puzzles that really aims itself at a younger audience of players. It plays very different from its alternative entry, Roar of the Beast. In Roar of the Beast, you play as the prince, exploring the many locations in his castle, defending against outside attacks that sees you defeating many enemies using combat from punches and special attacks, while you explore the many locations within the castle grounds. The game is more action focused compared to its counterpart, with a heavy emphasis on combat over puzzle solving. The game was well received, but was found to be very frustrating due to the steep difficulty and large amount of enemy encounters you will face in each level. Both games are essentially aimed at different player dynamics that prefer alternative playing styles, which will suit a much younger audience.
Marsupalami is a 1995 action game by Sega for the Mega Drive based on the comic book series. While not having direct ties with the series itself, it acts as its own standalone experience. The game is a puzzle platformer where players will take control of Marsupalami while using his special tail abilities to guide Bonelli the elephant through each stage. Bonelli has capabilities of his own that are sometimes necessary to overcome certain obstacles. Bonelli automatically walks forward, changing direction when he is harmed or runs into something forcing him to turn back in the opposite direction. So it will be your job to guide him on the right path. The game presents many challenges as you try to solve puzzles, mainly to guide Bonelli through the stages with the use of your tail as a stairway to climb over obstacles. It has some interesting concepts, but was ultimately met with poor reception, stating that while it is aimed at a younger audience, the difficulty of the puzzles will be too tricky for many to deal with, as you have little time to move characters over obstacles, forcing many tries before successful completion, which will frustrate many players. In Mickey's Ultimate Challenge, you'll enter the wacky world of puzzle solving where it takes centre stage. You will guide Mickey through a maze of puzzles and challenges to help the other members of the castle fix the problems they've caused. The game itself would see many ports across multiple platforms including the Super, Nintendo, Game Boy, the Mega Drive itself including the Master System and Game Gear with the Master System version being released later in 1998 by Tech Toy in Brazil. It is an interesting title that is more focused on puzzles over action compared compared to other titles featuring Mickey Mouse. But the game did receive mixed reviews, with many liking the unique charm, but found many of the puzzles to be too easy or frustrating to be fun. Disney's Pinocchio, released in 1996, is a platform puzzle adventure game from Virgin Interactive. It was also ported to the Nintendo Game Boy and Super Nintendo console and is based on the animated feature film originally released in 1940. Pinocchio was brought to life by a blue fairy who informs him that he can become a real boy if he proves himself to be brave, truthful and unselfish. The game combines side-scrolling elements with interactive puzzles, using segments between levels to convey the story in the form of a children's storybook. The game would be published by Capcom in Japan within the same year and the 32X version of the game was made and completed but was not released due to the game's limited popularity as it wasn't received well among critics, panning it for its clunky sluggish controls and vague puzzle elements, leaving players unsure of what to do.
hook, would see many versions and game ports of the popular movie being added to systems and the arcade between the years of 1992 and 1993. Depending on the console or platform, you would be presented with different gameplay styles from side-scrolling action and platforming to a beat-em-up that played similar to games like Double Dragon, Golden Axe and Streets of Rage. The Sega and Nintendo versions would be side-scrolling action games with each iteration featuring various locations that include caves, forests, lagoons and snowy mountains. Ratings would be mixed across the board as all of the games played differently from their counterparts and as a result it was difficult to determine or distinguish which of the games was superior. But while they do have some interesting ideas, when we compare them to many of Sega and Disney's other popular titles, they do fall short in terms of overall quality. Goofy's Hysterical History Tour was released on the Sega Genesis in 1993, playing the popular character who finds a job as a janitor within a museum only for his rival Janitor Pete to cause trouble to get him fired, which takes you through a course of events to undo the meddling catastrophes and clear your name. The game is a side-scrolling platforming adventure with many stages that consist of multiple levels and the goal of each level is to make it to the end where you will have to face off against Pete in a final battle, which you must defeat in order to to progress. There are some interesting gameplay dynamics with this game, utilising the mechanical claw which must be used to grapple off ledges, collect items and is also used to defeat the many enemies that you'll face along the way. The game was well received by magazines stating that they enjoyed the many intriguing gameplay mechanics but did find the game to be quite difficult with some elements in later stages. The Jungle Book game is based on the iconic movie from the 1960s that saw many ports released on home consoles of the time during the early 90s. The plot follows the film with many references made noticeable throughout each of the game's levels with the interactable objects and enemies to boss fights that fans will relate to. The Genesis entry is often considered as the superior version of the game with the other ports having interesting quirks but didn't play as well as this version. Although the Master System version itself was less popular it still ended up being the best selling game on that console in 1994. However, the Genesis version is still considered as the best way to play the game even to this day. <laughs>
Mickey Mouse, the great circus mystery on the Sega Genesis console, sees you play as either Mickey or Minnie, with the option to team up in cooperative play to complete objectives as you make your way through the many levels to face new challenges. You will have to keep your eyes peeled for hidden items lurking behind blocks to use to access new gear to aid in further progression of the levels in the game. The game was well received among fans, favouring the cooperative gameplay and the use of items working together to solve puzzles and finding hidden items, which added to the replay value, although many wished that the game would have been longer as it doesn't take too long to complete. Mickey Mania, The Timeless Adventures of Mickey Mouse, released in 1994, developed by Traveller's Tales, and was also published on the Super Nintendo and Sega CD. Players control Mickey Mouse who must navigate through various side-scrolling levels, each designed and based on classical Mickey Mouse cartoons. There would also be a game later released on the Sony PlayStation in 1996, renamed as Mickey's Wild Adventure. Mickey can attack enemies by either jumping on them or using a limited supply of marbles, which are located throughout each of the levels. Levels themselves provide plenty of challenges and puzzles which the player must solve to progress. The game itself was well received, with reviews stating that they liked the originality of the experience while also enjoying the nostalgia between classic and current gameplay elements. Quackshot was released in Europe in 1991 that follows Donald Duck on a quest to find hidden treasure but he also has to deal with his arch nemesis Pete who also hears of his plans and tries to beat him to the treasure. You will find yourself engaging with puzzles and enemy encounters through many challenging environments with some impressive visuals that appeal to the nature of the gameplay. The game is very challenging however, often being stated as overly difficult regarding some of the stages in the game, with the controls being somewhat vague in response causing many issues when jumping 
jumping and interacting with various level elements. But aside from these elements, the game was well received and became one of the best selling titles on the Genesis on the year of its release. Donald Duck and Maui Mallard released in 1995 for the Mega Drive, in 1996 for the Super Nintendo and PC in 1998 for the Game Boy. The game stars Donald Duck under the identity of a detective named Maui Mallard who adopts the name Cold Shadow when he changes into his ninja form. Maui Mallard is a medium boiled detective whose only means of self defence is an insect launching pistol that can launch several forms of bugs, some of them combined for greater effect, that he will use while visiting a tropical island when a mysterious idol goes missing. Throughout different levels, Maui transforms into Cold Shadow, his ninja alter ego, who can use a variety of short range attacks using a staff to defend himself. It is a typical platform game that sees you running around, jumping from platform to platform, interacting with objects to find items and secrets. But one of the game's most distinctive gameplay features is allowing the player to switch between different character forms to suit one's needs. The game was greatly received among critics, mentioning the appealing variety of the game that changes the game play dynamics as you transform into different characters that would be needed to complete many of the game's challenging set pieces. The Lion King is based on Disney's 1994 animated film that follows the journey of Simba from a young cub to battle with his uncle Scar as an adult to reclaim his kingdom. The game was developed by Westwood Studios and published by Virgin Interactive for the Super Nintendo and Genesis in 1994 and was ported later to the MS-DOS, Amiga, Game Gear, Master System and NES console. There are many platforming elements along with a variety of boss fights and mini games within the game itself that will prove to be quite challenging especially in in its later stages. As it stands, The Lion King is currently seen as one of the most popular and visually stunning Disney masterpieces seen on early 8 and 16 bit consoles. Pocahontas is a cinematic platform game, similar to the likes of Prince of Persia and Flashback, 
that would also be based on the 1995 film of the same name. The Genesis Mega Drive version was developed by Funcom in conjunction with Disney and was released in 1996. The game later received a port to the Nintendo Game Boy that would be published a year later. A Super Nintendo version of the game was under development but was cancelled due to the development taking too long that didn't consist or coincide with the release of the Genesis version. In the game the player plays as Pocahontas and Miko, switching between the two frequently to overcome obstacles. The player will gain various new abilities from animal spirits by helping them which follows many plot points seen in the film. It is an interesting game with some impressive visuals that present great attention to detail with beautiful backdrops, character animations and locations. Toy Story was one of the later entries to be released on the Mega Drive Genesis console to coincide with the huge success of the animated movie. The game follows the plot of the story from the film with the gameplay adding a variety of twists to change up the various dynamic styles you'll experience the further into the game you'll get. It is a very challenging game however, especially during the platforming sections and boss scenes where you will also be greeted with many changes to play through levels with gameplay from different genres, from pseudo 3D racing with impressive visuals to a top down point of view race level playing as the RC cow in a micro machines format. But the most impressive aspect of the game is the level where you must rescue the toy aliens from inside the claw machine that takes you through a highly detailed first person 3D maze environment, very like gaming icons with Wolfenstein 3D and Doom. It's quite incredible to see this level of detail running on the Genesis console, as many didn't think it was possible. But this level alone is proof that the Genesis console was more capable capable and powerful than originally thought and with the right team behind the development anything could be possible as it also had great music, sound effects and excellent responsive controls which you would not expect from a Genesis game using this concept. With that in mind it's interesting to know why more games weren't developed using these ideas on the console as it definitely worked. Toy Story the game as with the movie sold in high volumes and while it may not be seen as the best game on the Genesis but it is definitely one of the most impressive with its vast and unique ideas that were different from anything else seen on the console during that time. Gargoyles released on the Sega Genesis in 1995, being inspired from the events of the popular animated cartoon series of the time, with a port of the game being planned for the SNES console but was later cancelled, leaving the Genesis as the only known way to play the game. The game loosely follows the plot of the show, with the player controlling the protagonist Goliath as he seeks to put an end to the Eye of Odin, a corrupted magical talisman that can transform whoever comes to possess it. The game presents a world full of dark, rich atmosphere with dim lit environments, dilapidated and crumbling buildings, playing from a side-scrolling perspective as you interact with environmental contraptions, climb and scale walls, fly and glide to reach ledges and rooms, while utilising your special abilities, combat skills and leaping abilities to defeat enemies by punching and throwing opponents around the map. The game was praised from the reviews it received, mentioning it to be one of the best games available on the Sega Genesis console. <laughs> Ah! <laughs> <laughs> 
Castle of Illusion starring Mickey Mouse follows Disney's most iconic character on a quest to save Minnie Mouse from the evil witch Miserable, which will take him through many challenging environments from forests to toy rooms and levels filled with food, cakes and chocolate with plenty of puzzles to solve and enemy encounters to overcome. It is the first game in Sega's Illusion video game series that would star Mickey Mouse, seeing a release on the Genesis console in 1990 which would act as a massive success for both Disney and Sega alike with it being one of the greatest platforming games ever to be created across all systems. An 8-bit version of the game was later released for the Master System and Game Gear, which were also highly received, with many players preferring these versions over its 16-bit counterpart. It is also considered as one of the best ever games on the Sega Master System itself. It was so popular that it was re-released in 1998 in Japan, as part of the Sega Ages Mickey Mouse and Donald Duck collection for the Sega Saturn, which would feature both Castle of Illusion and Quackshot. A remake of the game by Sega Studio Studios Australia was released for the PlayStation Network, Windows and Xbox Live Arcade in September of 2013. The game would also be included on the more modern Sega Genesis mini console. World of Illusion star Mickey Mouse and Donald Duck was developed and published on the Sega Genesis in December of 1992 and is part of Sega's Illusion series of Mickey Mouse games. The game would also be included on the more modern Genesis mini console. You play as both Mickey Mouse and Donald Duck trapped in a mystical world in which you must work together to escape. It is one of the only games in the series that allows for co-op play that will make it easier to complete many objectives and puzzles, boss encounters you will face as you explore beautifully crafted worlds and environments, being among the most visually impressive ever seen on the Sega Genesis itself. I remember playing this a lot at a friend's house over the weekends as a kid and we would have a blast playing co-op as it was so much fun. You also had the choice to play on your own but it was always better to play the game with someone. The game overall is considered easier than other titles and relatively short but is often seen as one of the greatest Disney titles to be released on the console. Bye. 
Aladdin is one of the best selling Genesis games ever made, with over 4 million copies sold. The game was released in 1993 and also received a number of adapted ports on other platforms with the NES, Game Boy, Game Boy Color, Amiga, DOS systems along with the Sega Master System and Game Gear. The game itself takes many references from the film, with the gameplay elements being heavily focused on action and platforming with mini games playing as Abu where you have to avoid various hazards in order to collect gems and extra lives and also a slot machine where you'll have to chance your luck again to acquire more gems and extra lives or new items that you can use to purchase additional features later in the game which is a lot of fun to play although can be quite challenging at times. You fight enemies with the use of a sword or by throwing apples which you will acquire on your journey that will come in handy for more difficult encounters later on. Aladdin itself also presents some of the most visually stunning graphics and character sprites of any game seen on the console, reflecting scenes taken from the movie itself in great detail. Great sound effects and awesome music tracks also contribute to the impressive gameplay that will stick in your mind long after you have played, and honestly, it's as fun to play now as it was when it was first released all those years ago. Aladdin would become Sega's third highest selling video game ever on the Sega Genesis, behind Sonic the Hedgehog and Sonic 2. Just when you thought you had seen all of the Disney titles, that isn't the case, as there are a couple more fan made games that have found a home on the system in later years, which we will now also look at. Squirrel King is an unlicensed platform game developed for the Sega Mega Drive that features Chip and Dale, the Rescue Rangers, on their own adventure. Squirrel King is extremely similar to Capcom's Chip and Dale Rescue Rangers and its sequel, Rescue Rangers 2 for the NES console. The game has some interesting quirks but falls short in many ways as it is very difficult and flawed. Darkwing Duck is an unlicensed port of the classic NES version that was originally developed and published by Capcom on the 8-bit console in 1992. This version has slightly better visuals but is somewhat limited compared to the NES version and can also be quite challenging to play as it isn't the most polished or user friendly game seen here but only hardcore fans of the original might want to give it a try. Chip and Dale Rescue Rangers 2 is an unlicensed fateful game port of the original Chip and Dale 2 Rescue Rangers. The intro and ending are different to that of the original, but the gameplay is almost identical to that seen in the original NES version. The player can choose between Chip or Dale collecting tokens through side scrolling levels, which there are 16 in total, with one boss. There is very little information online regarding this game among many of the other games seen on this list, as they do vary in quality and more than likely won't be for everyone. Only Disney fans might want to check them out. Thank <laughs> you. 
Finding Nemo isn't an official release, but simply a game hack based on James Pond Robocod that utilises similar gameplay elements from that game, where you play as Nemo exploring different levels and hidden areas to find items and defeat enemies. It has a simplistic gameplay design, with some very unique cartoony visuals, but while the game displays some references to the film, it doesn't have any official plot related to the movie itself, so it acts as more of a standalone experience. <laughs> This game hack features Hercules the character from the Disney movie that is an action platformer that is very similar and has been inspired by the PlayStation release seen in 1997 with its own distinctive visual design and animated cartoon graphics that reflect those seen in the film. The game will take you through many environments from lakes, caves and forests while defeating enemies using your sword and special abilities. Very little information can be found online apart from a few written articles but even with that the description around the game is quite vague so the best way to understand it would be to play the game for yourself to see what is happening. Mulan is an unlicensed game for the Sega Mega Drive, based on the Disney film of the same name that was released in 1998. It is an action platformer game where you take control of Mulan through four levels with a few sub-stages in a recreation of the film's plot within each level. You will jump and climb your way through many locations on each stage while using a sword to defeat enemies. This is a fan-made game, so it isn't of the same quality seen in other Disney-inspired titles, as it does have many flaws, but is better than some of the others seen on this list. The Disney games released on the Mega Drive Genesis console provided fans with a glimpse to interact with their favourite cartoon and movie characters with a variety of different experiences, many of which are average at best, while others are often regarded to be among some of the greatest of all time. These are just my opinions of what I consider to be the best Disney games on the platform. But what are your thoughts? What would be your favourite or least favourite games on this list? Let us know down in the comments below. With that being said, there are many more interesting games that saw home on the Mega Drive and other Sega consoles over the years that are worth revisiting, which you can learn more about in this next video that will look behind the scenes of more memorable titles from this unique catalogue that set the stage for many future ideas to exist. <laughs> 